Beast mode engine. Bunch of gaming built by Doug Butterfield. Yeah, it's time, man. I'm excited to crack into this sucker. So The Kraken. Today is the day, which is actually the same day as the last time you saw us in real life. In YouTube life, it's probably two days later. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to pop this sucker apart and see what she looks like. Yeah, in, so in there. some easy things we're going to pop off first. This valve cover, there's just six 10 mils on top, some of which are already loose. We'll pop those off. We'll see what them cams look like. Then we'll start breaking down in there even further. Probably take the cam cartridge out, get those head bolts out. Yeah, I would like then, to get, yeah, get the head off it, give the head a good look-see. Obviously at that point we'll be able to see the cylinder walls, make sure we don't have any damaged cylinder walls to deal with. Flip it over, take a look at you know the bearings in the bottom end, and then uh, that'll give us a pretty good idea of the state of this sucker. So. And so one thing too to mention here is that we're not rebuilding an engine that's blown. So if you guys are watching this trying to replace an engine that's messed up, there could be a lot more wrong with yours than there is wrong with this one. So this one was still running strong, it's just uh, not strong enough for all the power we're going to throw at it. So Better to do this now than after you find out it wasn't strong enough. <laughs> yeah, after you put a hole right there. It's just a lot less of a mess. So, so nothing too crazy here. Take this uh, valve cover off and see what we're working with. Heck yeah, dude. All right, Doug-O, release the go. Krakens. Whoa! There it is, man. It's got some hair in it. You can see the horsepower just popping out of there. Yeah, man. It's got two cams in it, so that's cool. <laughs> two cams, approximately, uh, No. how many valves, Doug? 12? Yeah, seriously, though, yeah, 12. But uh, in all seriousness, everything looks pretty good so far. All the cam lobes look uh, good. I don't see any signs of foul play on any of that stuff, so. She looks healthy so far, which is not very far, but. <laughs> for, for this six bolt removal, we'll, we'll, we're looking good. We'll go deeper. Maybe we'll just call it a day here. Go out on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> so in the past, we struggled with uh, me sort of getting behind the engine to see what's going on. So this time we've moved from over there on the bench, which you can see, lonely bench, to uh, coming over here so I can step around and Doug could explain what's going on as he's working on the engine, so that's pretty cool. Smart man, which is pretty weird of us. To not have done that by now, or what's weird about it? <laughs> yeah, to just make a good decision. Yeah, that is weird. Uh, but anyway, this is your X3 engine. No big deal. A lot of accessories on it still. Obviously, yeah. you pulled the valve cover off. All that stuff looks pretty good. So we'll pull some little stuff off it, but next we can uh, go ahead and we'll pull the uh, cam chain tensioner out. So we'll take the tension off this cam chain. And then we can go ahead and take out all these, I believe they're eight millimeters, so they've got like a T30 or T40 Torx in them as well. And then uh, basically you can pull the cams in the cam carrier completely out. So this whole assembly will come out and then we'll be able to get the head bolts, pop the head off. Nice man. So before we get too deep here, we really wanted to tease what's uh, going into this bad boy. So Evolution Power Sports, you know, our sponsor hooked us up on these at a pretty good price. We still paid a bunch for them. But uh, yeah, so we got some Carrillo rods and we got some Carrillo CP pistons. So these are all forge units here and these should be H-beams. So let's check this out. Doug, you've seen these before. So yeah, cool. Dude. And look at this, it has the weights of everything on there. Wow, so interesting. Yeah. So much info. Crack one of these open and talk about them real quick for the people. Okay, man little pizza boxes makes me hungry there we go they're small but when you compare them to the stockers they are huge <laughs> you will laugh so you've seen us talk about these before obviously you know high quality materials used in these and the geometry is really where the big difference is so this is an h-beam rod and they're called that because if you were to cross section it and look at the cross section it would be in the shape of an h whereas a typical 
you know, cast rod or stock rod usually is more of an eye. So these big cross sections right here obviously give you a lot of strength in the uh, compressive direction, keeping them from buckling under high loads and then uh, spitting out the side of your engine, making an <laughs> extra port that we don't want. That's so good. Those will handle anything we would ever consider throwing at this engine. <laughs> so yeah, those are good for worry about those. 400 plus horsepower and, and actually more. So Evo's put down, I think, uh, somewhere around 330, 340, if not more, on their big stage seven car using these rods. Yep. yep so yep. that's cool. And then below that good we have units. the pistons, man. Equally as cool. Same story here, man. So CP pistons. I think we're, uh, this is a stock compression ratio, so we're not changing anything with the compression ratio. This is already a turbo engine, it's low compression, but you can see they're a dished low compression piston. They are forged, they are strong, they're beautifully machined, and uh, yeah, they'll do good, man. So they're sexy looking. Yeah, you buy an aftermarket piston like this, it's a little thicker, it's a little stronger. You got, you know, thicker ring lands, so they're more robust, they're able to take the boost you know, without breaking a ring land. Nice big skirts on them. Basically just uh, ready to take all the power. Some good stuff, man. So thank you to Evo for getting these to us. Uh, they did overnight them. Or no, they didn't. They two date them to us. Two date them. Yeah, we ordered them last week and it's not Tuesday and they're here. Heck yeah, So uh, yeah, this stuff is gonna go in here relatively soon, but we have a lot of teardown to do on that bad boy before all this stuff. But we figured we'd tease it and uh, get that out of the way and really show you what's gonna go in this thing. So nothing but top-notch parts. Good stuff, man. Yeah, it'll be tough. So that'll take care of the bottom end. We've got some uh, head studs to go in the top to uh, keep head gaskets in her, hopefully, under lots of boost, and it'll be a tough motor. So top-notch parts, top-notch talent, putting the parts in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we got all the uh, bolts out of the cam carrier, whatever you want to call that, and Doug popped out the timing chain tensioner and yep. pulled the timing chain down. It's hanging right there. Tensioner comes out from over there. There's a little plastic guide that clips on right here. You pull that off, you can slide the cam chain off. So now this whole assembly should just lift out. Pretty interesting. Yeah. And so... Uh, and that's that, man. All your stuff stays there. Pretty cool. Yeah, so these are interesting too. I guess we can talk about this while we're here. The X3s. Even though they're, you know, typical overhead cam, they don't use a typical uh, cam bucket with a shim underneath to uh, adjust the valve lash. These actually are hydraulic. They've got a little hydraulic piston in there that adjusts the lash for you pretty slick. So you can see the oil port right there that feeds it in. Oh yeah, interesting. So you don't even actually need to adjust your valves on this thing? Is that just what you're saying? Don't need to adjust your valves, man. There's just no adjustment there. So. That's pretty cool. Well, thanks there, Rotax. Yep. Good job, guys. So now, man, we'll go ahead. We got a couple bolts in here. We got all our main head bolts. We'll pop those suckers loose, and then we'll lift the head off and uh, really see what she looks like. I'm hoping good. Me too. I hope we don't find any cylinder damage, because that would be really the only thing that impacts our, our plan. Especially considering when you've already bought stock bore stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So it is head stud removal time, kids. Yep, here we go. So you have any particular order that you crack them off in? Just cracking them loose. I mean, I'm going from the outside in. I don't really make any difference, but... That's the opposite of the way you tighten them up, so... Right. It's just sort of a... OCD thing, I think. But. Right. It's not like there's a ton of force pushing this head up or something like that, so... Just the clamping force of the bolts. Sort of loosen them up together slowly and we'll zip them out and see if we can either breathe a big sigh of relief or go into sheer panic mode <laughs> about five minutes from now. I don't think I'm into the sheer panic mode. I'll pass on that. Uh, turns out new blocks for these aren't that expensive, but also dealerships don't stock them. So. <laughs> Have you called Stevens though in Bay City? Because they <laughs> stock everything. Maybe they got it, man. We always made jokes because it's like, you know, oh, I need a, you know, fuel pet cock valve for my 1972 PE 175. We got nine of them. How many do you need? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just one. It's 
These are the stock torque to yield bolts. Yep, never to be used again. Nice seeing you, bolts. See ya, never. You were good, bolts. I don't think they had any head gasket issues, so. Nope. Good units right there. You did a good job, good work. You can rest now. Yeah, so they're torqued to yield. You can see where they're necked. So basically the part where the bolt is skinny there, it uh, essentially just stretches uh, once you get it to a certain tightness. And then that stretch is consistent, a uh, consistent clamping force. So you turn them all until they stretch slightly. You have a consistent clamping force and your head holds on nice. Thank you, dude. So I think we got them all. We'll give her a little whack. <laughs> there it is. Well, hello, Mr. Engine. Gosh dang, man. Okay. How do your arms feel? Whew, tired. They got a little pump going, but... Gumby level. Okay, so the bores. This is what we were here to look at. So far, a little scratchy. Not terrible. So what's interesting about the X3 is that the uh, bores aren't nicosilled like your classic what would you want to call that power sports bore yeah a lot of power sports engines have a nicosil plating on them which is super duper hard and uh, it takes a little more work to rebuild them but they're also very robust so the cylinders don't get hurt these are a regular cast sleeve which is nice because it's borable um, but it's also a little softer so we got a little scratch in this one which is the, uh, not the PTO side, would be on the passenger side. I don't know what cylinder number that's actually. Three, maybe? But yeah, I don't know if it goes one, two, three, or one, two, three, who knows. But anyway, interesting, man. I wouldn't be too surprised this thing's in, been put into some really bad situations uh, during the time that I've had it, you know? Number one looks really good. Number two looks really good. Number three, in a perfect world, you might do something about. I think, you know, it's not beyond just giving her a good hone and running it, but hmm. she's not perfect. Well, when we get this uh, cylinder off, we'll see what it looks like and uh, evaluate from there. Sounds good. I think she's ready to go now. So, oh yeah. Wow, that went quick. Yeah, you can see the sealant right there. It's kind of coming apart. Woo! There it is, man. Don't so there is, yeah. Oil out here. There's the bottom end of your X3 motor. So not much to see here, really. We're only doing this so we can get the rods out. And uh, we'll probably check the bearings while we're in here. The bearings do yeah. look good, can thank see God. The main bearings, yeah, they are looking uh, not bad, man. Not bad at all. Crank. No crank marks on the good. crank. Yeah, good, good. So now what we'll do is we'll uh, pull the caps off the rods. We're not going to really worry about marking them or anything because they're basically just going to get thrown away. So we're just going to pull them apart and uh, pound the pistons out yeah. of there, dude. Well, actually, are we going to reuse these rod bearings? I think we probably are. Right? Oh, yeah, which means you got to be careful with them. Yeah, so, okay, so we'll be careful with them and that we'll mark them. That way the same bearing goes back on the same... Journal. But anyways, 
Neat. Doesn't look bad. So if you get in here and see any sort of like bluing or anything on your crankshaft, uh, you got some problems. So uh, these things overheat, they'll get blue, the journals are turned blue. Sometimes you can see deep scratches in the bearings. Yep. There will be some marks in the bearings because there's multiple layers and lead coatings and gah, 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 all this stuff on the bearings that will wear off over time. But Yeah, for sure, man. He's not, you know, like this bluing on the webs is okay as long yeah, as you don't fine. see it, yeah. you know, in the uh, machine journal area. So all looks good, man. Pop the caps off and pull the crank out of her. Things are happening. This Neat is good. stuff. What's happening right now, Doug? What's happening is the crank's coming out, man. Boom. So we got all the rod caps off. We kind of pushing them down out of the way. And uh, pulled the timing chain out. So we're just going to go ahead and lift the crank out of her. Cool, man. This is a really big step. Fun stuff. Now, as advised by a lot of our side-by-side -side blog expert engine building fans, they said do not store this on its side, dude. Whatever you do, put it up on the... Oh, thank God. I know. I know. Woo! I know. It's not like that thing sees any horizontal side loads ever. <laughs> You set it on its side for a second, it will bend. It's gonna bend, yeah, completely. That's totally false. Yeah, anyway. It won't, but. Anyways, man, yeah, that's it. So let's uh, set this thing up on its side. We can pull the pistons out, get a good look at those bad boys. Yeah, so I think at this point, we're gonna probably leave all the main bearings in. Obviously, we gotta pull the rod bearings out because those are going on the new rods, but wow. Heck yeah, things are happening and people are doing them. Heck yeah, so these will push right up out the top. So you just want to be a little careful, keep a hand on the rod or cover it in something so you don't scratch the cylinder up big time. But boom, great work. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see how dinky that stock rod is. So this was the one with the scratch in it, I think. Nope, oh, must have been the yeah, other I think side. It's the other okay. one, yeah. So this is uh, okay. So yeah, there is a scratch in one of the cylinders. I think we're just gonna hone it and send it. Yeah, you know. With the uh, infinite amount of time, maybe we would repair it, but the sucker's got a race, so it is what it is. Two Overall, out of three is not bad. Doesn't look bad, man. You got any skirt marks? No, I mean, you know, they're somewhere on them, but in general, in pretty good shape. All the ring lands look okay, all the rings are moving around. Like, she was uh, holding up well, so that's good to see. Yeah, and this thing's seen a lot, so we shut her down last time about, uh, I don't know, 28 psi something like that pushing a lot of power through this bad boy so yeah. so i'm just kind she'll of hold up loosely putting these back together to basically hold the bearings keep them protected for a bit smart so we're going to push out these uh rest of these two pistons here and then what what's your plan after this basically man it's going to be uh move on to the head so we're going to do a little port job on that little that's PJ. going to be our long lead at this point so we'll go over there we'll uh disassemble it take a look at the valves for fun get her cleaned up and then it'll be time to sit down and start working on it Hoo -wee. well it is time to go full head disassembly here so we have the entire motor tore apart these are all the covers and all this stuff you've seen all that happen uh, now it's time to get the head ready for porting so couple things that we have to do before we get that thing ready and Doug is going to describe it right now. Yeah, so basically, to, you know, when we disassemble this, we want to make sure all these cam buckets go back in the same holes. Is it 100,000% critical? Probably not, but, you know, they're wore into their particular bores, so we just want to put everything back in the same place. So I'm just cleaning the tops off and I'm just going to number these things and then uh, we'll pull them all out and then we'll get our little valve spring compressor tool out we'll pull the valves out and see how those bad boys look yeah so we've seen this process before but never on an x3 motor so it's uh, always fun to document new stuff and it's always fun to see you know a little bit of differences between engines you know we've never seen one that has these hydraulic uh whatever's on them pretty cool yeah rotax stuff is pretty cool man i mean they've been building uh neat motors and doing neat things for a long time so nick and i were talking about some of the older rotax stuff and like they've had some pretty revolutionary designs so 
And you see a lot of trick little things in this motor too. But anyway, see so see what I did here. I just numbered them. That's kind of the system. I start with cylinder number one and number them like that. I'll remember where they go. So we'll pull these out, set them in a clean place. Booyah. And then so in terms of porting, Doug's probably just going to do some uh, light porting on the intake. And then on the exhaust, maybe match it to the gasket, maybe not. And then maybe uh, touch up the uh, ports a little bit on the exhaust manifold as well. So nothing mind blowing, nothing crazy, nothing huge, but a little more air always helps. Yep, a clean up port. And then, you know, also that'll be a good opportunity to just get the valves out and clean all those up, reseat them in, just make sure everything is sealed up well, inspect all the, you know, the springs and that sort of thing. and. Just make sure, you know, you can pretty, it's pretty easy to go through and rebuild the whole engine and not do something, you know, like check the head over well and basically not end up with a good result because you missed something small. So right. that's it. We got all the buckets out. We'll get the uh, spring compressor tool out. Pop those out of there. So Doug, what do you got here? This is another tool by our friends at ATD. Oh no, this is a Detroit tool. Detroit tool, man. Nothing but the Wow. Best. Yeah. So anyways. What does this bad boy do? Pretty simple little unit here. This is a valve spring compressor. So this is going to allow us to hold the valve, compress the spring, get our keepers out, and uh, disassemble these bad boys. So if you've watched us do a number of engines before, you've seen this exact same process. If you haven't, then here it is. Get this thing set up quickly. Very exciting. This is a really cool tool, though. So it comes with all these attachments that uh, go on the retainer. And then the retainer is incompressed, the keepers pop out, and then Doug's a happy boy. Pretty simple, man. Yeah, so the way valves are held in, basically the same on every overhead valve engine. Ever? Like forever in any application, <laughs> basically. But these take a little bit uh, different tool than some other engines. So you can see on the back side here, he's putting that right in the middle of the valve, which will happen when it gets tightened. But and lots then of here. lots of tightening. And on this other side, it's sort of a, a hollow tubery do that surrounds all the goodness in there. All right. So once we're there, yeah, basically we just tighten this thing up, kind of hold it centered-ish. That's just a quick shout out to our sponsor, Evolution Power Sports. That's what Heck that was. Yeah. So yeah, that'll compress. compress then Doug's it. in a, you're gonna come in with a magnet. Yep, just far enough so you can go in here. So yeah, you can see it push down the retainer, I like as opposed to that one. Retainer's deep. Come in with a magnet, grab the keeps. And then move on with life. Yep, so they're little, so you want to keep an eye on those. Yeah, those are right Pretty there, important. Real small. So there's one, there's two. Back this guy off. And once you back it off, that valve can pop right out, huh? It should. If it doesn't, that'd be pretty weird. <laughs> Rotax, bro, you never know what they're <laughs> thinking of next. Uh, Keeperless valve train, bro. Double keepers. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's another set of keepers in there. So luckily we have our resident expert, Steve, who's already rebuilt this engine. Uh, not really on hand right now, but on hand later <laughs> yeah, to help us with all things. Double check everything we're doing here. Make sure we don't forget any parts. So we so get we'll any high speed those, springs, beehive. No, we didn't I mean, do we're, like that. we're not changing the springs. We're not doing anything crazy. We're not going to be turning higher RPMs or anything like that. She'll hold all the boosts. So there we go. So there's a, that's an exhaust valve smaller one see a little discoloration on it overall put it on top looks, of the head so we can see it uh, looks pretty good i'm gonna zoom in on it for the people now that we have a better camera do it pretty cool looking yes yeah, so that's white and kind of gray due to probably some of that e85 yep so we'll clean that off but basically when you're looking at these things you're looking at the ceiling surface which is right there and if you kind of look at the side of the valve a real wore out valve will have cupping in that ceiling surface so this one looks pretty dang flat other than a little carbon build up so good valve we'll uh, stick it in our valve holding uh, apparatus here let's see that boom great work overall and then just rinse and repeat so yeah do that 11 more times and here we go
stuck, bound and down, about to start some important. I wish I had a count of how many times a scene has started with us dropping tools. This basically just happens constantly. <laughs> anyway, what's happening here, dude? This is the head. Time to start doing head. a little porting, man. So we got it all stripped down. We got our flex shaft motor all strung up and ready to go. I'm basically just going to start moving a little metal. So I'm going to go in and like we talked about before, this is just basically going to be a cleanup port just to make everything nice. You know, reseat all the valves, clean the combustion chambers up, polish everything up, just make it good. We're not doing any, you know, crazy material removal. We're not significantly reshaping the runners, you know, anything like that. Just a nice cleanup port. So we'll go in first with some burrs. We're going to work on matching the uh, runners into the seats because there's actually some pretty big mismatches in this uh, in this head where the casting meets the meets the valve seat. So we'll go in and fix those and then we'll uh, work outwards on the port, smoothing everything out. We'll come back, clean up combustion chambers. And just, uh, yeah, throw it back together. So this is probably a six hour process, I'll guess. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, it'll be a lot of uh, time lapse from here on out. But Yeah, so Leonardo, me, as you know, I'm leaving. Jesus, my wife won't stop calling me. <laughs> Let's just answer see what she has to say. Hey, uh, honey, what's up? I'm filming right now. What did you have to say? Uh, yeah, I'm filming. What do you need? Oh, uh, I told you I was going to have today. Okay, well, I'll call you in a minute. Okay. Unbelievable. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, we'll uh, just do that. Next time you see me, on video, hopefully this will be uh, done and we'll all be much happier. And this will be tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so I think I'll knock this out tonight and then hopefully tomorrow we can just finish cleaning up the rest of the motor. Everything will be here and we can do the reassembly to start heading back in the right direction. Heck so. yeah, dude. The pendulum swings the other way. Dougie, Godspeed to you, bud. All right, see you guys in a bit. This song sounds familiar. Hmm. Doug porting on Leo's head. Oh, is he a dentist? No, I guess he's just doing porting. Look at him and handle the head. Oh, new scene. What's he doing now? Don't really know. Maybe he needs to clamp that head down Wearing purple gloves, looking like a thug Hey, my name is Doug, not wearing safety glasses Don't give a fuck, my name is Doug Look at that head, this thing's gonna rip Now I'm trying to find some tools, putting on new tools Got a long tool, working on the exhaust My name is Doug, wearing lots of gloves Using WD-40, baby Dougie Heads. Gets a lot of satisfaction out of doing that. Oh, check it out. It's now time for the outro. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Support us on Patreon or buy parts from the parts store or just continue watching. Thank you, everybody. Here's your names now. Boom. See if I can read one. Boom. Eric Jeffrey, boom. Thanks, bud. Hey, guess what? I'm out of words, so I'm just gonna go now. Thanks for watching.